There we go. Okay, so what you didn't see right before I hit record was I said, go ahead and lie down. He's getting grumpy. Why are you so grumpy, Turbo? Why are you getting so grumpy, bud? Come here, say hi. There's the baby. <laughs> Boy, you just need a nap, don't you? A big head. Let's say, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm great. We got, there's a lot to talk about. July garden tour slash just updates of what's been going on out here. And this will probably be somewhat of like a working garden tour because I haven't spent much time out here at all in the last like two weeks. I've been out to work out, to take care of the pets. But as far as the garden is concerned, the drip's been running and it was just so hot. And when things get that hot, just kind of move into maintenance mode with everything and just keep everything watered. And it's, it's been interesting. Oh, and the disclaimer part for people who are new here, I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, zone 6A, 6B. I live right on the line. Regularly drops down to around zero degrees Fahrenheit in the wintertime, sometimes colder than that. Gets up over a hundred during the summertime. If it's in a pot, then it does not stay outside. It goes either into my garage or into a commercial greenhouse that stores very large plants like this big Alexander palm down there. And there are some plants that are in pots that look like they're in the ground, but they are not. So I always have to make that clarification because sometimes people get confused and like, how do you, what, what's going on here? In St. Louis, these aren't supposed to be grown out here. And how are you liking this? I finally got the table cleaned off. Figured, hey, garden tour, might as well have things looking kind of nice. And then within 30 seconds, I started piling stuff back up on it again. Plants though, well, I mean, that's relevant. Okay, and shoes. I ended my last vlog where I set up some more drip irrigation because I just had a quick trip. Got out of town, went to DC for a few days just to get away from the heat, even though it was so hot in DC, it was not anywhere near as hot as it was here. And I mentioned when I got back that apparently some of the drip had failed while I was gone. Drip irrigation that had been running just fine all summer. The week I'm gone and it's over hundred degrees outside. That's, that's when it's gonna break. Fantastic. In the month of July, we just, there was not much rain and it was hot. And I, I like the summer heat, but this was, this is different. I learned a lot. A lot of stuff about gardening and dry heat. I'm not used to it. That's a new thing. It's typically very, very humid here during the summertime. And uh, instead of normal, like mid to upper 90s, maybe low triple digits, and then like 70 to 90% humidity, it was triple digits and like 30% humidity. Just a whole different game with gardening. And myself, I learned I really, uh, dry heat. I'll take it. I don't mind it at all. It was fantastic as far as just the way it feels to be outdoors. But uh, the plants, not so much. If I were to move someplace where there's not humidity, I would definitely have to change what I'm doing in my garden because a lot of the plants I grow, that weather just was not for them. But to follow up on that, we did finally get some rain. Don't worry, we'll get to the plants here in just a minute. We just gotta play catch up because hadn't done much out here in a while. So moving forward from not having like any rain at all, uh, we've then, out of nowhere, just had record-breaking rain for about a week straight, four days straight. Uh, bad. Lots of flooding. Some people died. I appreciate everybody who reached out to make sure I'm okay. It, whenever there's flooding in St. Louis, I'm pretty much always going to be okay. I live, like, on a hill. I'm not in a floodplain, so I'm safe. As far as flooding goes back here, the pool about overflowed a couple of times, which, no big deal. Just turn a knob. That drains down. And then uh, there was just a lot of debris that washed out from all these houses that are uphill. So it was just a lot of junk. There's still remnants of it. You can see where the leaves and things came up and went into the pool. That's it. I'm not complaining. I'm going to complain about rain. We needed it. It was pretty bad. Like I said, though, things were fine here, which I'm grateful for. It was just one extreme to another. Went from no rain to just absolutely way too much rain. But everything was fine here. I don't care about some mess and backyard flooding. That's not a big deal. Anybody in the St. Louis area, if you have like a GoFundMe or you're aware of any charitable organizations that I can link below, you want me to help out in some way, let me know, comment down below, hit me up on Instagram. People can look into seeing what they can do to help because it was, it was pretty bad. There are a lot of places that are in rough shape right now. Okay, I think we're caught up now. Onto the plants. I feel a little weird talking like with the garden tour stuff when I know that there's so many people who are not doing great right now where I live, but we're just gonna press on, hopefully have a nice time just relaxing, enjoying being outside, seeing some greenery, seeing me make fun of some stupid decisions and just what worked and what didn't and what died. Because it, it was really hot. There, 
some things didn't make it. I need to grab my pruners. Like I said, I haven't been paying attention to what's been going on out here. Just been keeping things watered. I think I have to do some cutbacks probably while we're walking around looking at some of these plants. Oh, and I'll need to free the tripod. The backyard has basically just become a space where I'm like, where can I hang things to dry? I don't know why, but for some reason in my mind, the towels need to be dry to take them inside to wash them. I know, that, I know that that doesn't make sense, but in my head it makes sense. Like, I don't want to take a sopping wet towel that's dirty and then put it in the... Anyone else? I know. I'm aware. That's ridiculous. Welcome to my brain. Got some new pots. That'll be kind of relevant as we walk around and look at some things. Cleaned up as best as I could out here. Everything is just sopping wet, and it's like the kind of rain where the plants wake up and just look beautiful. A lot of them just look pretty ragged and haggard from all the heavy rainfall on them. It'll probably take them a couple days to perk back up. In the long run though, everything's gonna be looking pretty good here in a few days. Just wish they were looking nice for the garden tour, but it's the last day of July, or tomorrow is, so here we are. For starters, in this bed over here, things are looking pretty good. The growth has been about what I would expect with almost everything that's over here. The gingers, Right here, the Hidichiums, these are Hidichium flaming torches. This clump has done a nice job multiplying. This got divided up a couple of years ago, and last year I was like, oh, I think maybe divided it too much. But you know, it's just the nature of things that needed to be done. But it multiplied some last year, and then some more this year, and now it has buds. They're about a week or two behind. Normally these butterfly gingers, they start to bloom around mid to late July. Okay, so I guess they're right on time. I feel like they're usually in bloom by now, but if they're off, it's not by very much. We had a weird spring. So some of the plants got off to an early start and then temperatures cooled off. It was kind of a cool May and June and they just sort of sat still. It got really hot and then they sat still some more, but things have, for the most part, caught up or starting to look nice. This is filling out very, very well. I love how the Hidichiums, really most gingers, they have that nice arching habit to them where they come out and over things. In a week or two there will be really big 12 to 14 inch flowers on top of these. Why do you have to run around underneath the tripod? It's probably going to be a theme throughout the video so if there are occasional like bumps and shakes it's the dog. My apologies. Starting to see some blooms on pretty much everything that's over here. I have this Ebulutin, which I can never say it right, over here that has done a ton of growing. Look at all that up there. Things probably put on three feet and it's starting to bud again. It Went out of flower for a few weeks and I was like, eh, I don't know about this. I don't know if I want it over here. If you're not gonna have flowers on you, then you might need to get the heck out because it does somewhat obstruct the view, but in a way that I liked through this window in here, because I figure, well, if there's flowers on it, the hummingbirds are going to enjoy it with the pink hibiscus in the background, which is also done an awful lot of growing. It's put on a good, probably foot and a half of new growth, that that would just be a nice thing to look at, having those big orange flowers from the ginger right here with the pink from the hibiscus and then the red like lantern bell-shaped flowers that hang out hang out hang down from the abulatin but if it wasn't going to flower then no it just looks kind of weedy and out of control and that's partially because the sun has shifted so its shape isn't quite as nice and tidy as i would prefer but that's okay and it does have it's hard to see but there are a good amount of buds on there so in a week or so that should be covered in flowers same thing with this Gorgeous yellow hibiscus right here that that's time for a garden tour. No flowers, but lots and lots and lots of buds. Same thing up there with the seminal pink hibiscus. Only has a couple flowers that are open on it, but it's got a lot of buds on it. I uh, amended the soil on all these with some bone meal about three weeks ago. Helped get some phosphorus down around those roots, help encourage blooming, and that has helped some. Like I said, the sun has shifted. So while these are still getting a lot of sun, it's just not quite as much as it was with the sun more direct in the sky. This Adenidia palm shades things more than it was before, but there's still light getting through. The Adenidia palm, oh, I thought I was zooming out, zoomed right in. Adenidia palm, looking pretty good. It's put out a few new leaves. This one, eh, we'll talk about it towards the end of the video. It, it hung on through the heat and did pretty well. I have this sunflower here that's just a volunteer sunflower that I had from, what, it was just some bird seed pretty sure just black sunflower. I let it do its thing and it was fun watching it. I think it's about done. I've been seeing goldfinches out here, which I never see. I've seen like four in my entire life and just over the last couple weeks I've been seeing them almost every single day, but it's just like a yellow dot 
seem to be a timid bird. Normally I have to put out thistle and like some other more specialized seed for them to show up, but the, I think the sunflowers are attracting them, so I don't want to cut it out even though it looks kind of like garbage and I think it'd look better to not have that right there. I'm gonna, I'll give it a few more days. I had thought that I should like let this go to seed so I can pull the seeds out, but really I don't, what, why? And I have a five gallon bucket full of the seeds. I don't think that'll be necessary. I'll cut that out of here when that starts to die back on its own, which I would imagine will be pretty soon. The front of this garden bed, I like it, but I'm just not that thrilled with the growth on the variegated tropical rose sun impatience that are in here. They're just now starting to take off. These got planted up in what, May, I think? Something like that. They should be a lot bigger than this by now. The Nanook Tritoscantias, they're looking fine, considering they were just put in as you know tiny little cuttings. They've done a good amount of filling out, but the actual sun patients, with the exception of this one right here, the rest of them have just kind of been there. And there's something about the variegation on them that just feels messy. It doesn't help that there's some weeds in here that I need to pull right now, and I need to put a new layer of compost down because all the compost mulch has been broken down. But it just, I don't know, they don't have as many flowers on them. The variegation just... Maybe it's not for me. I'm not sure. One thing I did learn, I talked about how I've learned some things about myself by having an entire month of having to be a gardener who has really dry, warm, warm summer conditions. I was severely underwatering the plants. I didn't realize it. It was one of those things where you learn as you go, right? So I have everything on drip out here and the drip was set for like, I don't know, I think it was five minutes and I bumped up to 10 minutes and I bumped it up to 15 minutes. And at one point got up to 25 minutes for each time they would run and they were still just wilting down and looking terrible. So I went ahead and I bumped up to 35 minutes for this zone over here and for several others and then just boom. Everything started looking much, much, much better. That's one thing with drip is that there's no real manual or great way to know how long you should be running those timers because it's so variable depending on what you're watering and where you live and the type of light and soil all of those things like potted plants they that would be insane they don't need to run that long at least not when it's humid and in the ground you know, it's going to hold moisture longer once i increase the time mostly i noticed with the gingers things got much 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 better and i think that that's why this particular sun patient down here is so much bigger than the rest because this one was receiving spray from the drip that was on these gingers over here. I have new drip set up in the front right here for the spot. The Tradescantia have been responding well to it and the sun impatience are starting to do more movement. So I just wasn't watering them enough. I've been gardening my entire life and just learning something new that when it's dry, you no, know it seems like common sense. You have to water a ton. I mean, a ton. I would not be able to grow the majority of these things out here if I lived in like Southern California. I mean, I could, but it would take an awful lot of water, and that's pretty frowned upon in areas that don't have a lot of water and there's wildfires, you know what I mean? I'd have to have a different style. I'd have to do some serious amending with the soils, and it would be a challenge unless things are situated properly. Not that people don't grow gingers and bananas and stuff like that in Southern California. It's not what I'm saying. It's just the extent <laughs> to which this is all out here. It'd just be more of a challenge is all I'm saying. You gotta get out of there. You're not supposed to be in there. Uh-uh. Leave it alone. Pardon the lights down here. I'm also getting some lighting set up over in this area of the garden. The other plants that have been over here are doing fine. Other plants that don't need a ton of moisture. I mean, there's some color cases in here that are just runners from a clump on the other end of the patio. The sable miners, which, okay, they can take lots of moisture if they also don't have to have it. They're doing fine. Good amount of growth coming out of those. Then the temple of bloom. Heptacodium. I don't know if I love it right here. I think it needs a few more years to fill out and get a nice shape to it. That it will have nice flowers on it here in a couple of weeks. It's a tree that flowers more towards late summer, which you don't get a lot with trees. And since this variety only gets about 10 feet tall, pardon the noise from the dog in the background. The Temple of Bloom, which is what this one right here, it's what these green sticks are only gets to be about 10, 12 feet high somewhere in there. And I thought that that would be a nice plant to have outside this one because it has a nice vase shape to it. In years past, I have taken some queen palms or a queen palm and centered it right there. But the root balls were getting too big on those to do that with anymore because there are a lot of pipes. That's a theme throughout this entire garden bed from all the way <laughs> down there and over. Lots of pipes 
in the ground. All the drainage has to work its way underneath this patio out to the yard. So you can't usually plant things in the ground that have really big root balls on them. So I thought this would be a good way to go. It'd be a nice option. And I'm gonna give it a couple more years and see how I like it. Right now, I think it looks kind of weedy. Not my favorite thing here. Maybe once it flowers, hopefully, I'll change my mind on that. Cause that was the entire point was to have something that has some nice flowers over here in this spot at a time of year when other things aren't in flowers. I don't know. Just gotta give that some time. I had some pumpkins over here that those did get washed away with the rain. There's still one left behind, which is uh, fine because if they washed away, it means they weren't really establishing good roots to begin with. They probably weren't going to be healthy plants. They should be much bigger than that by now. It's just a tiny little thing. Looks like garbage. They just end up getting too much shade from the bananas, which just recently got a cut back. So some more white is starting to get down there. So maybe I was just a smidge too late with all that. The crinum lily though, look at this one. Isn't it beautiful? Especially if you can see the flowers. This is the Persephone crinum lily. Hardy, in, I believe to zone 6B. And I've had it for years. It's not typically in bloom for the garden tours, but I typically only get one or two flower stalks out of it. Right now, there's one bloom stalk right there, two, three, four, and another one coming up from in there. There's probably some more. So this plant is just putting on an absolute show this summer. Don't even know how long I've had this crinum lily. Many, many, many years. It's just a tiny little thing from Plant Delights Nursery. And this particular type, takes a while to get a nice clump going and to start putting on a show but it's a beautiful one it has nice big broad green foliage on it semi evergreen if you live someplace warmer than where i am this normally dies back just about all the way during the winter time and then these really nice flowers on that's actually not one of the best looking flowers let me find one that looks a little bit better here's a better looking stock great big giant flowers no fragrance but that's fine but they have a nice look to them i think that the very like tropical ish type foliage the way it's all big and broad and glossy and shiny and the flowers are just a bonus and the bananas doing well over here plenty of damage from the heat and the sun that'll be gone here before you know it once these put out a few more leaves i can cut some more you know how bananas grow they grow so fast i don't really stress over getting them pruned if they have some bad foliage it's all right in a couple weeks won't even be noticeable won't be something that stands out. This corner over here, I'm trying to think between now and the last time we were over here, has anything changed? Maybe? Oh, well, yeah, it's been a month since the last garden tour. Lots of things have changed over here. I planted up this Pharaoh's mask, Colocasia, in the middle here. This pot was sitting in the middle and I meant to move it and then I just, I forgot. And so here it sits. Well, the problem is I actually forgot what I was going to do with it. So that's why it's still there. I need to find the spot that I'd like to move that to. The Pharaoh's mask has done some growing. Planting this Pharaoh's mask up in this spot was a bit more of an experiment because they're not really hardy here, but on Brian's Botanicals website, they think they said they're like possibly hardy into zone seven. And this corner is very, very warm. So I thought, hey, let's, give that a shot in this spot and just see what happens. Cause I have a whole bunch of them. They multiply like crazy. So why not plop one of them in the ground here and it can report back next year and let everybody know how it did during the winter time. The soil was amended very heavily with compost to help one with moisture retention and two just with nutrients, the plants that really like a very nutrient dense soil. And the sunlight is pretty good though. It's starting to shift. That's partially because these cannas that are behind it, the banana cannas, they started to lean with the rain that kind of pulled them forward. And so that's casting a little bit of shade back there. So I might maybe get in there with some stakes and just pull them back. It's only like probably four or five inches that they need to go back, but that would help let some more light in down below. Though I do think enough light's still getting through, but uh, just to be safe, that might be a smart thing to do. Think about it. I also need to give these a few more days and see if they'll go back to where they were. I kind of doubt they were because I'm starting to see an arch down below in their growth. And when you see that arch, that usually means that they've made their adjustment already they're not likely to go ahead and push themselves even further back whatever the case i think it's fine the uh, sable miners are over here looking great they've flushed out with a lot of new growth and the gingers that are over here are mostly all offshoots from that flaming torch that i showed before they don't have any buds on them yet but they are not clumps that are as large and as established as that other one i would imagine in a week or so there should be a bunch of blooms or at least buds coming out of them. They go all the way from over here and wrap around this spot. This middle's intended to have that big colocasia in there. Hopefully in a week or two, be able to look out that window and see that beautiful, bold, dark foliage 
on those banana cannas, the red banana cannas with those really giant, giant plums of creamy orange flowers through that window. I'm really looking forward to that. The hummingbirds really like those. Gingers would be cool to stand that window and ever like, you know, doing stuff at the sink and get to see the butterflies and hummingbirds and just nature enjoying the garden. That's half the fun, right? Planting things we can enjoy and the nature can enjoy too. Okay, camera's gonna, are we good? Is it done being stupid? Camera overheated. It's not that hot out. I didn't think it was. Perhaps I just got used to it being in the triple digits and it being in the 80s feels cool now. I and mean, it does feel kind of cool. I had a hoodie on until a few minutes ago. I don't know what I was talking about since the camera overheated, but the main thing is that this area is warm, have good moisture over here. So these are all plants that like a lot of moisture and they seem to be doing well. Those sable miners, the scrub palms, they had a lot of die off last winter because I didn't protect them. That was more for the benefit of the channel and being able to talk about their winter survivability than anything being able to show like, you know, here's why I don't have like windmill palms and pindu palms and things out in the yard that you could technically grow here if you were to protect them heavily. When even the sable miners get like 50 to 60% leaf burn, in a warm corner where the snow melts right away and we had a mild winter so that's that was all that was about never followed up with it but there it is pardon all the black tubing when the compost when the mulch is down on top of everything that hides most of it and then the black line that's running around through the middle here see something i forgot to pick up from the storm i was very last minute in last week's video where i just needed to get some drip set up before i went out of town and I will have to get more tubing to have enough space to rewrite. It doesn't really matter. It's fine. So that other pumpkin wasn't doing great, but look at this one. Look at it. It's so big and so full. Which one is it? I can't. Orangita. It has a small little pumpkin on it. It's supposed to be a pretty prolific one. It's hard to see because they're still really small, but there are some tiny itty bitty little pumpkins starting to get you know, filled out down there. Those will be taken off here pretty soon. I like this variety. Last year I had some volunteer pumpkins from just, I think they're like pie pumpkins that I, they rotted and I threw them out in the garden and I let them grow and they filled in basically from right here all the way around. And it was a mess, but I was excited to grow the pumpkins. It was just fun. I enjoyed having them out here, but I only got like three pumpkins out of them. So I spent some time doing some research last winter on vines that stay small and produce a small type one that I could fit into the garden. And I went with the Orangita, which is right here, and the other one, which is the Weeby Little. And I may take that other Weeby Little, that tiny six feet away from it, just come over here and show it to you. This one, I may go ahead and lift that out and just move it over here into this area. I can pull that pot out and let it do its thing, because clearly there's more sun right here. And there's still some time probably for it to do its thing. Things don't really get frosty here till mid to late October. We can have a random frost at any time, pretty much after September, but I think that it would be okay. That's enough of all that. We've talked about that enough. The bamboo, this is black bamboo. I didn't plant this right here. It's not a plant I would ever want in the front of my garden because it just, I don't look at it. It looks dumb there. This is what's left of a larger clump that was originally growing down further. And one year I over pruned on it where it was putting up some shoots and spots that I didn't think would look nice. And if you over prune on the roots with bamboo, then sometimes you kill them. Didn't kill it. There were some, survivors clearly and I figured I need to give us about three to five years for it to reestablish itself and then I can lift the entire clump and move it someplace that's more appropriate for it. We're about there. I would think in the springtime it would be safe to go ahead and dig this up and move it and that'll free up the front of this bed here. Things have gotten kind of wild over here. They are pretty much always looking pretty crazy because of all the bananas and then the bikini teeny colocasias that just fill in and spread absolutely all over the place. Not a colocasia I would recommend for people who have really long growing seasons because they can get out of control. At the same time though, they're pretty easy to go in and just pluck up. So I don't know, you do you. But it's just, there's more of a messy vibe than I would like. So if that bamboo weren't there, I could pull out some of those bikini teenies, which I will likely be doing here hopefully soon because this spot, now that temperatures are cooling off, it's safer to start planting trees and shrubs. We're moving to that time of year, and I would like to put a magnolia right here, a dwarf magnolia, probably a Bracken's Brown Beauty, or a teddy bear, maybe a little gem, an evergreen variety that doesn't get massive because there's a foundation about, I'd say, 15 feet over from where the magnolia needs to go. You have to be careful with that, right? I, what's the general rule of thumb? It's been a minute. Let me see if I can remember. I think it's the average spread of the crown divided in half in each direction. So like a 30 foot tree, you'd want 15 feet out 
from each side, from the crown over, right? I think it should be fine. People around here plant the Bracken's Brown Beauties and Little Gems close to their house. I haven't heard of any issues. They don't tend to grow as vigorously this far north, so it would be a slower grower in this spot, but just having something evergreen there would be fantastic. I think that'd be a good spot for it. There was a Jane saucer type magnolia over here, but it got magnolia scale and had to go a few years ago and it's time to replant that area. So hopefully there'll be some good stuff at the nurseries here in the next few weeks. Not much going on with these Baju bananas over here. I didn't mention that, did I? The bananas, they're all Baju bananas, B-A-S-J-O-O. -O. Lots of different types of hardy bananas you can grow in your gardens. This is just my preference because they're really the most foolproof generally the most cold hardy and their foliage is nice and thick so when you have lots of storms which we do here you don't have quite as much of a mess with the tattered foliage on them just easy bananas fun ones to grow that clump is much bigger than this one because this one flowered last year so a lot of the main plant died off the bananas you get one set of flowers out of them and then whichever one of those pseudostems that flowered dies off so it's here all the little offshoots and pups from the ones that flowered late last year I would expect those to hopefully put on a few more feet of growth, especially once I get some more compost on top of them. In a nutshell, this garden bed from here all the way down to where I just was with those banana trees. I like the changes I made this year to an extent, and there were some things I left out because I was like, I don't know if I need to do all that, but I wish I had like having lots of sun impatience of different colors in here. I didn't do it just because I wanted to put the money in other places, so I cut back on some things and that I think it, it would have made a difference, but I still like the way things look. I like the change in the colors with the foliage and the different shapes and sizes and textures and everything. I don't know what he's barking at. I don't know what his problem is. When he gets tired and grumpy, he starts barking at everything. The peach trees, I've forgotten to update with these in the last couple of garden tours. These were planted on each side of the pool in the springtime and I moved them over here to the driveway. With those timers not being on last week and the triple digit temps, they lost pretty much all the fruit on them but the plants themselves like they look fine they look totally fine don't really care about the fruit on them like that would have been fun oh looks like there might be one up here one little peach maybe a few more I, they're ornamental for the most part the bonfire peaches so i haven't been too concerned about those this area over here has just it's gone wild they call acacias which were just little bitty pieces of bulbs that had rotten i cut them up and didn't think they would do anything and they've started to take off and I don't actually know if I like them over here. I think it's maybe too much. They're shading things somewhat. I have variegated, what are they? Spreading salmon, sun and patience down here that went out of flower for a little while as they were filling back up. They're starting to uh, get some more color on them, which is good because they were bugging me, not having flowers on them. They're looking better now. The Enset Morelli bananas. They're looking nice. They've done a good amount of growing. This is one of those things where I was talking about where I was like, okay, well, I'm filming the garden so I need to remember to come in here and do some pruning on these because they have some foliage that got knocked down during the storms and they could just use it anyways. Sometimes I think it's nice to get in and get some of the lower growth out, opens things up down below. Lower leaves that are in here, they're not providing anything for the plant at this point. They're in the shade and they're just shading everything below them. So may as well get them out of there. And I think that that looks much better. It could have taken off a couple more, but I think that's okay. The two of them are looking pretty good back there. The Enset Morelii bananas, that is. I was hoping for more red out of them. They're getting enough sun. Like I've seen these grown in much shadier locations and they still have more red on them, but perhaps that's just all the drastic shifts in the temperatures or whatever the case. I don't, it doesn't matter. I think they look nice. They're still pretty banana trees. They've done a ton of growing since they went in the ground. These two are easily six and a half, seven feet tall at this point. And they were just little, little tiny plants when they went in the ground. The Pharaoh's masks, there's some more of them in this pot here underneath the Alexander palm. They absolutely loved all of the rain last week. Really put out a whole bunch of growth. It's a colocasia that just doesn't like to dry out. They like things nice and moist, getting some good growth out of those. I'm trying to think what else is over. Oh, the Stuttgart, right in front of me. Gorgeous canna, isn't it? Isn't that just stunning? Planted several of these, all from different growers last spring, and this is the only clump that came up with variegation on it. I want to say it was from Holland bulbs, but I'm not positive. I'll report back on that in the fall when it's time and people are looking to do their bulb orders and try and remember like which grower actually sent the proper type of plant. They have a little bit of scorch on them, but that's pretty normal for this type of canna. They're not when you stick in full sun. Nice filtered light is good for them. They seem to appreciate it. Look at this leaf. Can I get in here? Is the palm trunk in the way? Hey, come on, look at that. Just beautiful. And out of the canna, a vigorous 
affordable plant. Not as affordable as they used to be, but everything's more expensive these days, right? Not the most established clump. I had actually originally ordered all of these because I wanted to put them in my my. I, let me retry that again. I had originally gotten multiple clumps of these because I wanted to put them in my my in my Miami planters. Brain not working, which I will show in a moment. And I only ended up getting this like single growth, so I needed to. Got the one, that's okay though, we'll multiply. Can plant more of them next year. I'm gonna dig them up and store them inside. Though. I'm not gonna leave them out here in the winter time. This spot right here doesn't stay very warm in the winter. It's like an ice cube right here. It's a drastic difference between the temperatures over here versus over there. Oh, the Alexander palm. It's good, freaking huge. Need to get some tree pruners that are big enough to get up there and pull out last year's growth on them so that it's not looking too hot. But there's lots of new growth coming out of them. Love this palm tree. Like was from Elegans, if you're wondering. Not the King Alexander, it's the solitaire palm. Has a fun inflorescence going to open up on it too. That's always nice. I like when the palm trees flower. I don't live someplace where they're horribly messy. You don't get flowers out of them that often, so it's more of a treat than a nuisance. Now this entire planting bed right here was looking pretty good. This crepe myrtle right here is a Natchez crepe myrtle that I'd mentioned in last year's garden tours, but it being a plant that just doesn't work over here anymore, there's not enough light for it as the trees have grown, and I needed to dig it up and get rid of it. I did dig it up and get rid of it, but apparently, clearly, I left a giant chunk here. So I do need to come in here and cut this out because you can see how that's shading everything in front of it, and it's not going to get enough light to put on much of a show. They tend to attract a lot of pests, ants, and aphids. Love these crepe myrtles. I would just rather it not be here. I've got my clippers here. I'll go ahead and cut that back right now. That's kind of better. No, it's just a big bald spot, but it's not going to shade the impatience as much as it was. That was a problem. There wasn't enough light getting through to all the impatience over here, which are looking nice. Little bit sparse, a little bit more sparse than they were last year, but that's because I didn't plant quite as many in this spot. I figured I'd space them a little bit further apart, which I won't do again. I like the instant impact. While they're looking nice, I do really like them, especially with the row of caladiums behind them. I would like it to be more dense. However, I do think that chances are August is, is going to be more like July. Typically, July is the month where I'm like, look at everything, it's so beautiful. July was sort of a standstill, like I mentioned. So I'm thinking the August garden tour is actually going to be where things are much more big, bold, and impressive because it just took longer for things to get going this year. As it is, they're looking pretty good. The gingers in the background, these are all gingerbread myogas that I talk about in every single garden tour. Looking pretty good too, aren't they? I have in here the, uh, oh, it's either the white feather or the dancing crane. I'm pretty sure it's the white feather. I think the white feather is the one where the variegation is on the outside of the leaf and the dancing crane, the variegation is on the inside. Or I may have that totally backwards. I don't know. Either way, that's what's in here. And then these silver arrows, so they are alternating. It goes, where does it go? Silver arrow at the end, white feather, silver arrow, white feather, silver arrow not doing much right there. And then another white feather. The silver arrow, even though it doesn't look that spectacular, it is one of my favorites. I do think I prefer it over the white feather. Beautiful, hearty ginger. But the uh, silver arrow, when the variegation comes through, which takes longer, they have to get to more of a maturity. It looks more like a diluted Alpinia zarumba. You can see a little streak of it in there on that leaf. So it's a more subtle variegation, but I like it more but they're both really pretty this is their first real year in the ground they got planted very late fall last year i wasn't really even expecting them to survive the winter because i planted them so late and they're only marginally hardy here but they survived they had a good amount of mulch on them three year rule of establishment right this is their first year next year they'll be even better their plants are going to keep growing is that that's not news to anybody right i like these in this spot i've wanted a row of them right here for a few years and that's because like i was talking about with the hedicium at the beginning of the video i like that arching have it where they grow up and out with the leaves that alternate along the stem and I think that that's going to look really cool coming up and over the plants that are right here in this spot. They have grown and multiplied a lot. When they went in the ground it was I think one or two skinny tiny little growths on each one of those. So that's that's actually pretty good considering. It's fantastic really. Lots of growth on those. Over here okay this is the spot I see I need to do some work on. This is a hardy begonia. Begonia grandis not smooch. I want smooch. It's never available. Pink teardrops. Planted one last year right there. They spread through underground rhizomes. So now there's a larger clump coming up over here. <laughs> this is the most ideal spot for it. I don't think that one's getting enough sun though. I'll probably need to dig up both of them. At the very least, this one will have to go somewhere else. 
probably this one too because it's a spreader because it's encroaching over here on the beautiful <laughs> somewhat tattered but still beautiful variegated hosta here this is a hosta time traveler has awesome variegation it looks like someone just took a paintbrush and went for it. i think that's the same thing i said in the last video about this one doesn't get huge slow to multiply got planted last year so this is what's come out of it i say I need to come in here with some finer snips and get some of the damaged leaves out of there but otherwise i say it's looking pretty good <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, hey, look at how great this yucca shred is doing. And it, it is. It's fine. But this is also a giant weed in there that I hadn't noticed. That chase lounge right there blocks that. So I hadn't even noticed that was in there. It had some dieback on it in the wintertime. It's flushing back out. I'd say this is ready to go back into the sun. I was hesitant, waiting a while because I didn't want to shock it. But there's clearly a nice defined sturdy crown in the middle. So I can go into a spot that gets some more light. The uh, beautiful black varnish, Pseudoranthemum. More red right now, because it's not getting a ton of sun. I also see the storm knocked over a few plants I forgot to pick up. I'll get that handled here when I'm done filming. Didn't realize that it got knocked over the laurel hedge. This is looking beautiful. Love my hedge. Always makes me happy seeing just the glossy, shiny green leaves. Not much to talk about with it this time of year, though. They don't do much. They flower, then they put out some growth, and then they just kind of hang out for the rest of the year. So that's the point that they're out. All the new growth is hardened off. It's blending in with the rest of them. I would say next year or the year after, these will be have put on enough growth while well, go ahead and start to shape them and prune them somewhat but i'm going to give them more time for them to fill in some more and take off i don't want to cut them up just yet i am seeing some things over here though that could use some pruning the pettis they did end up doing some spreading oh these are a plant where i'm really shocked that these weren't more damaged from the heat because they tend to just kind of blech when it's really hot and dry but they look pretty dang good they have some hail damage on them. Some of that's probably slug damage too. I need to put some slug and snail stuff down in here. They actually did more spreading than I'm used to. So I'm going to pull those out from inside those impatience and we'll be right back. So those aren't supposed to be there. Better ish. Got a lot of them pulled out. They were crowding those impatience that are in there, which I've never grown over here before. That was an experiment. I wasn't sure what the light was going to be like, but I'd say they did well or have done well. Growing season's not over yet, despite all the stores advertising for Halloween. It's only been summer for what six weeks at this point if even however with this spot one thing i would change would be just like i mentioned over there that i think i just need to go more dense with them because it would have filled out more and then uh, probably not letting the pedicets grow up in the middle i don't think they appreciate that there are some portions here that are ready for their cutback almost with the impatience generally in july i'll go through and give them a shear about 50 percent of the growth on top let them fill back out from down below uh, they just hadn't done much growing, so I didn't see a reason to do that, but I can see there are some over there where it would probably be a good idea. If you look over here, you can see why you wouldn't want to let those pedicets grow inside there, right? Big leaves. Look at, see that? Look at that. Freaking huge. Big leaves. So yeah, I couldn't let those do their thing. They would have shaded everything out. This was full of pedicets in the springtime. I pulled them. I left the back row, and then everything over here. Here. Up there, you can see where there is some damage where the water was rushing through here, but they'll be okay. Generally, in summer, when it gets really hot out, they die back, like I was just talking about. So, around this time of year, I normally have to go in and thin them out regardless. So, it's it's fine. They're okay. It doesn't look great, but they'll be fine. Just got a little snipper happy with the mimosa tree. It needed it. It had branches that were smacking you in the face if you'd walk around over here. Could use some tidying up over here. Tropicals that prefer the morning sun and no afternoon light and lots of moisture. This is where they've been hanging out. There are misters all over the spot to keep things nice and moist for them. Everything seems to have appreciated the stromanthi, these sun impatience. Okay, okay, I've talked about this, so I'll be brief with it. I was thinking about putting them in these Miami planters with the Miami planters that I had mentioned before when we look at those can of stew carts. There's one on each side of the steps there. But I just, I don't know, I just thought I could do better than impatience. And I have some other plants that may end up going in there. But I brought these two hanging baskets over here just to see how they would do with this kind of light. And uh, it's, not, it's not what I like, right? You plant impatience for them to be flushed out with flowers. Not enough light here for them. Regular impatience I think would be fine. But the sun impatience, they need some more light. They can go into the shade, but you're just not going to have as much of a show. And that's what I'm seeing with them right here. That being said, I may end up just plopping them in there because I would like to get these planted up. This is one of those things where I set the bar too high and then I started panicking and I was like, oh no, I bought these beautiful planters 
And then I couldn't really find the plants that I had wanted to put in them, and those cannas didn't do what I wanted them to, so it's just... They're just sitting there empty. May as well set those impatience in there, right? And that'll look better than nothing. I'll set them in there, see how it looks. Eh, see? It's nothing mind-blowing, but I, mean, I guess it's okay. Sort of. Not really. I actually think those better empty than with those in them. They just... Not my favorite plants. Not right now, anyways. It doesn't matter. These will be getting planted up here very, very soon. I have the plants just about ready to go into them. That'll be more of a surprise. Planted some caladiums and impatiens back here. Again, this is an experiment. Want to see how they would do with the light over here? And they've done well. The caladiums have grown so vigorously that you can't. Uh, there are impatiens down there. You just you can't see them. It's just little caladium corms dropped down in there. They filled in very, very, very nicely. I'm also looking over here, remembering that I need to repot this philodendron giganteum. Looking okay. Not super hot. We had those high temperatures. Things dried out some, but it's only the older foliage that yellowed off. So I'm going to say this is okay. But I am still going to pull it out from here so I can remember to get it repotted because this just, that's not doing it anymore. It's way too big for this container. Oh, and look at how blue the Cebu Blue Pothos is blueing. Epipredum panatum has some leaves that, <laughs> that could just be bug damage. It had some fenestration starting on it. I'm really happy with the amount of light that it's getting right here. Pardon the honeysuckle, that shouldn't be there. Plant seems to be appreciating it. The color is fantastic on it. And there's a good amount of growth that's working its way down around everything down below. This needs to go up on a taller structure though. It really needs something bigger that it can climb. So that's something I would like to tackle here, hopefully in the next few weeks. Probably have a lot of projects lined up in front of that. Keep forgetting that with the garage being heated, in a better, more efficient way than it ever has been before that I can actually do planting projects in the winter time and in the fall. I'm not used to that. I'm used to having to like really take care of any and all house plant needs. Is this weed growing right out of the wall? Yep, sure was. So anyway, it's just been reminding myself that there are some projects that don't have to be done right away, which is good because we're coming up on time to get the trees and shrubs in the ground. That's where I'd like to focus most of my attention for the rest of the year. So I'll be doing plenty of stuff with the house plants, just I'm not going to be panicking to get it done so I can do things inside. Major Whaler Honeysuckle. I don't know why I even started to talk about it. It's out of bloom. There's nothing to see. More caladiums and impatience over here. There's a hardy begonia planted in here somewhere. At least there used to be. Those were just popped in here again to sort of check out what the sun was going to be like. Little lime punch, panicle hydrangeas back here too that you can't really see them. But I think in a couple weeks those should be sticking up above everything with some nice flowers on them. I did some very, very heavy pruning on the wax myrtle here, or not wax myrtle, northern bayberry. Similar aesthetic, just one's more cold hardy. I had this growing trimmed into an archway that you could walk underneath, and I really, really enjoyed it, but they're messy. There's a lot of stuff that was falling out of them and into the pool constantly, so I just figured it would make sense to go in with the pruners and just cut the stuff back where it's not falling into the water. And I think that it looks just as nice. I also have a pile of orchids down there on the ground that got moved during the storm, got washed down, so I need to clean those up. Lespideza thumbergii. I got this staked up. Normally it's down and makes it so you can barely walk through here. I need to pull the stake up, the rope up higher. A few weeks that should be covered in lots of pink flowers, They're covered in pollinators. I don't think there's not, is it just, there's a spurs here. There it is. Pool planters. I absolutely love how these came out this year on both ends. The planting's pretty similar on each side. Variegated tropical rose sun impatience. They have the pink flowers and then the variegated orange, which I, I haven't gotten a lot of growth out of them, but they're in there. Not as vigorous as the other ones. They're also planted a different size. And then the sweet heart, sweet carol, one of the lime, one of the proven winners, Ipomias in there. Supertunia vista jazzberries and honeys, just lots of color down inside these containers. The ones on the other end, those are the ones that I moved the hydrangea trees into, which are just, I'm loving the flowers on them, but we had so much rain that it, it drooped most of the branches down, and now they're just kind of, they're just looking like a couple wet poodles. They're still really nice, especially at nighttime, the light changes colors from the pool on them, and the whiteness, that lightness of them reflects light very well. I like having them down there. I would like them more if the branches were held more upright, but I guess it's it's fine. I've learned there are other varieties that would probably do better in that spot. The Little Lime Punch, which I just showed y'all back there, or kind of, it's not much to see with it yet. Has a more sturdy stem. When they start standardizing those, which hopefully they will when they start putting them to tree form, those would be excellent substitutes for what I already have over there. In this spot over here, what's changed? Has anything changed? Not really. You see some weeds. The bamboos just doing what bamboo does. All these impatience and the alyssum are 
growing. They're looking pretty sad right now. There's just so much rain and water on top of them that everything looks pretty beat up. There's a lot of water downpouring on them. In a few days, that should all kind of fluff back up and look better. But I'm getting a good amount of growth out of everything over here so far. The light seems good. Even the weeds popping up inside these bamboo planters. Lots of color and texture and fragrance. That's why I put the lobularia over here because in the morning, it's mostly when I smell the fragrance from them, just those tiny little white flowers smell so nice. They have a very sweet fragrance to them. The wires that are laying out here, that's because I stuck some lights in these containers. I was just playing around with them, trying to see if I even wanted them over here, and I figured I could rearrange the wires if I decided to keep them over here. And I do, I think I like it. They look nice. You just have to take my word for it, especially with the caladiums at nighttime, the light shines through them and they light up. It looks really cool. I'll have to remember to do a nighttime tour towards the end of the summer. Sometimes I forget to do that. Let's see some more plants that were knocked over from the storm. Spanish moss and bromeliad doing their thing. I did pop a couple orchids over here, but they're not like fixed to the spot. But there's a wire that holds this palm tree up. Sorry, that was a lot of hand in that shot. And they needed a place to hang. So I went ahead and I just let them sit there. They're fine. Over here, what's going on with these plants? The metanella. It, it was so hot. It just did not like the heat. I kept pushing it further and further back into the dark and it was just cooking out here. But it's okay. New growth is coming out and the new growth is looking better. It even has some buds starting to pop out of it. So hopefully fairly soon this will have a nice like shower of those pretty pink berries coming off of it again. The Thai constellation, the Monstera Deliciosa, doing great. Plenty of growth coming out of it. I did lose a couple of leaves when I moved it over here, but I so, sort of expected that to happen. And they were old growth, so it's not something I was concerned about. I forgot that I planted a Repetophora in here with it. And, oh, there it is. It's an easy plant to keep trimmed back, so I'm not worried about it competing with the tie. I just thought something that would grow up that pole might look nice there, and it does. I think that it's going to be happier in this container than it was the way I was keeping it before. The Adenidia palm planter, well, the ginger's mostly, the range is knocked them over. They should stand back up. If not, I can prune them out and they'll put up some new growth. Cordo and Fredicasa looking good. Loving life over here. It's a simple plant. This one have barely had to water it. Love the Cordo and Fredicasas. Spring Fling Caladium. So I think in the last garden tour, maybe have been one prior to that, I said that I wasn't sure which caladium, or I wasn't positive which caladium it was. It was coming up in this container because I couldn't remember from last year, but I said I thought it was the Spring Fling. It's the Spring Fling. And that have great foliage. Awesome veins on that in great color. There is a Florida, who are you? Florida Beauty Caladium, yes. Yeah, that's what it is. Over here, pretty vigorous, as well, pretty much everything in this container is been pretty vigorous. The trailing vinca coming down the front, Cora Cascade, lots of flowers on it. That's almost down to the ground. I do have to remember though, if I don't cut that ginger back, that's going to keep shading it. I'm going to have to remember to do something with that. Now the hot tub wall, lots of growth over here. So much color. Gingers, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? The one on the right here is the uh, Green Mountain ginger. It's a costus variety, has fun mottled foliage on its older leaves, or really the new leaves come out with a more mottled type. It doesn't matter. It's a pretty foliage on the plant. And they have these fun orange inflorescence in the middle that have tiny little pinkish flowers that pop out from the middle. And then these are the Siams right next to the Altisma folias. I really like gingers. They're all over the garden. I have them all over the place. Areca palm, looking fantastic. I rotated this this year. Normally this side of it is facing the other direction. And I thought that the view is better from this side because you can get to see the nice canes on the trunk there and the Moroccan or Brazilian fireworks, the porifier of Pyrocorma. I'm sure I'm not saying it right, but some of the other plants that's underplanted would stick out into the light some more. It was hot, so I wasn't sure how the fireworks plant was a Brazilian or Moroccan, whichever you want to call it. I wasn't sure what it was going to do because this pavement down here, it gets hot and they don't like a ton of sun on them, but it seems to have stayed shaded enough that they're doing well. I gave it a cut back and it's filling out nicely from the inside and it, overall it seems happy. It's getting ready to flush out with a lot of new flowers. Right now it's just going out of flowers. So there's not much to look at, but in a few weeks, just like all the other things, like I said, thinking of the August garden tour, there'll be a lot more color on a lot of the plants. The mule palm right next to it, 
just got repotted. Hasn't done much since it's been repotted, but it has a spear getting ready to open. Same thing with the other one. Forgot to mention that accidentally. Skipped over a few things. This one got repotted in the video. They were in desperate need of the repot. And it's starting to finally, finally open up the spear that I was talking about in that video that had just been sitting there for like a year. That's starting to pop open and I can feel the outline down here where there's another one getting ready to come up. So that's all good news. Bismarckia looking good has three leaves on it it lost almost all of its foliage last winter so i'm happy to see that it's recovering went down to 13 or maybe it was 15 i can't remember when i brought it in but it was too cold that was i pushed it to see what the limit was in 15 13 it, it didn't like that lost all of its leaves but it's coming back i'm impressed that it's coming back from that kind of cold period oh and there's another m4s that's showing up here in the adenidia it's not doing much you don't want to focus so i don't know if it's actually going to end up opening like anytime soon, but it'd be cool if it did because they have really fun, nice, like bright red berry-like flowers on them. It'd be pretty. That's been there for like a month and a half and hasn't really done much of anything. I was down in there and now it's out here. Now we'll see what happens. Okay, back to the hot tub wall. Mr. Freckles Croton, looking great. Needs a repot. I mean, it's doing fine in the pot that it's in, but I would prefer it being a pot that has more of a lip on it so it's easier to water it, to water it in heavily that is. The banana, I believe it's the Super Dwarf Cavendish, just got put up in a video, I don't know, a month or so ago. I underplanted it with some Nanook Tritoscantias. This spot isn't going to work for it though. It's too, you, you can see what's happening, right? That's not going to work. I have a better spot for it that I'll get it moved to here, hopefully next week. The variegated sea hibiscus, looking lovely. Isn't that a great plant? There's lots of new growth that's been coming out of it. This got a repot also sometime in the last few weeks. I think that that was a July video. Could have been in June. I don't really remember, but it has responded very well to that repot. It's a really nice, sturdy, vigorous plant. I love this hibiscus. Good grower, low fuss. With the temperatures we were having, there was a period where the drip got turned off over here. It didn't throw a fit. It didn't skip a beat. It was totally fine. I know that that can be the case when they're in the ground. In a pot, that really surprised me. Very, very sturdy. It's all up and running on the drip now. It gets plenty of water. Um, uh, excuse you. Mind if I get, what are you doing? Turbo, okay. Weirdo. Amelia Pattons. Covered in flowers. It is covered in flowers. I'm seeing the hummingbirds and butterflies over here on this one a few times a day, which is the main reason I grow it. One, because it's easy and they grow quickly, but also just the pollinators absolutely love them. Have some heat and sun damage back here on the uh, Cuba, but that's not at all surprising with the temperatures that we had in the pavement. It's nothing that's that big of a deal, so I can trim that out of there. Supertunia Vista Bubblegums, they're doing what they do, growing like crazy. Have some canary wing begonias back there that are looking nice. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a electric blue gecko color case. You see that sheen? I don't know if it's going to come through on camera. Hopefully you can see it. Very metallic-y. This time of day, it's more of a purplish hue to it, but there's a certain time of day when the light hits it and it really does have like a very dark blue look to the leaves. And it's fantastic. It'll look even better when it gets bigger. The Sweetheart Caroline Redbud. Haven't planted it yet. It was just too hot. And I'm not ready yet. There's something I need to go with it when it gets planted. It's going to go back here in this corner and come up and behind everything. Things have cooled. It looks like we'll be back into the 90s next week. Right now I have in a pretty shaded spot on drip and it's just chilling. Hibiscus, they're covered in buds. None of them are in bloom. Go figure, because it's garden tour time, so I'll be able to show everybody all the beautiful flowers. <laughs> Literally every hibiscus I have. Almost none of them have flowers on them right now. That's okay, lots of other flowers to look at. The New Guinea impatience in here underneath the Robolini palm. Wait, is that? There's a Robolini palm, pygmy date palm. Looking good. I'm pretty sure it's in more of a resting phase right now because I see lots of buds on it. So I think it's just a coincidence that in the last two garden tours it's been kind of in that transitional place because it looks like it's about to flush back out with a lot more flowers in the back of oh, the croton. Not much to say. It's doing very well. Lots of new growth on it. A little bit of a lighter color than in the past when it was growing over there in more sun, but I'm okay with it. It looks really nice, especially under those lights. I'm gonna wait for this jet to go away. This entire spot in general has been doing pretty well. The only changes I would make, I was gonna say maybe not the begonia back here because it was pretty spindly for a while, but I gave that a cut back and it's filled back out and it's been flowering looking pretty good. This hibiscus though, this one hasn't been flowering much. So I just, I'm gonna say it's not getting enough light. You can tell from the size of the leaves. It's a seminal pink, which is a pretty standard 
hibiscus don't usually have leaves this big on them and the spacing between the leaves tells me that it could use some more light. It has some buds on it, but that doesn't mean that it's perfectly happy. So I think that I should probably move that. So I'll be doing it another time. I was gonna do it right now, but it's in a heavy pot with a lot of drip in it that I'm gonna have to take apart. The Cordo Inferno Casa that's back there, looking good. Love the foliage on it. Another reason to move the hibiscus though. Look, it's totally blocking it. It's blocking the view from most of the patio of this planter over here that I just love. I love how these colors came out with the canary wing begonium, those like reddish coral flowers with the purple on the ginger, like look at just put them together. Talk about a great color combination, right? That chartreuse green with the purple and then that red. I really like it. There's some strobilanthes back here that are just starting to push their way through. Hopefully they're getting enough light to keep working their way up. We'll find out here fairly soon. The Cordo and Fredocosa, I believe, kiwi over here. Not much to say, just another sturdy plant that is underplanted with some catharanthus that are, they're doing great. They have a dog on them right now. Fun, happy plants. This planter doesn't get a ton of water. They're all plants that don't need a lot of water. It's been doing well with those conditions. I have the seashell planters over here, which got plants up in a different video. You can see also another reason you need to move the hibiscus. It's shading those, but the succulents, those were all put in there mostly as cuttings or ones that didn't weren't rooted in, I should say. They're filling in nicely. I wasn't concerned about this hibiscus blocking things and shading things when it was triple digits and very, very dry outside because I figured that just helped the situation, but I think maybe we will see that perhaps things are going to calm down and be back to more like normal summer conditions. So I should be safe to go ahead and get that plant moved. What's going on over here? Some crispiness on the Gila Beauty, not shocked by that. Same thing with some of these bromeliads, they got fairly scorched those temperatures it was just too hot but they still held in fairly well the catharanthus are what i'm really surprised with in this clamshell planter right here because i was thinking that these would not get enough sun and it would be too moist the lemon coral sedum i wasn't worried about because it's a sedum that's just vigorous pretty much no matter what you do it grows and those sedums typically don't like a lot of moisture they're seemingly okay and they're looking pretty good a little bit stretched because it's not getting a ton of light but that's intentional because of the bromeliads back there, the types that are in there. You can tell that it's not getting a lot of light because the fireball near Rogelius that are in there, not very red. The more sun they get, the more red they get. So light-wise, I maybe could have gone with some other varieties in this container. I'll remember that for next year. But I think that this was the safest bet for them. You can even see the ones that I wasn't sure what they were. They, they're pretty cooked. They're not looking too great, but the gazpacho, which I believe is back here, they're doing fine. It's just the two puppy loves in the front. They weren't thrilled about it. I actually, I could probably go ahead and pull those out. I think it would look fine without those in there. But the Catharanthus, though, looking great, aren't they? Not a ton to say with them. They should be more full than this if they're getting more light. These are plants that like a good amount of light and they don't like wet feet. And this spot is filtered light and consistently moist. And they're still growing and flowering. That's, that's pretty good. And the same with the Strobilanthes back there as the one on the other side. They need to do some more grub, but they're finally starting to pop up from behind everything. When I first planted this up, you couldn't even really tell those were there. So at nighttime, that looks nice. Those shiny reflective leaves, there's lights right above there. They have a nice reflective sheen to them. So if those put on another, I'd say six inches to a foot of growth. That's gonna look fantastic right here. They already look fantastic. There's plants that I like. The queen palms, they've done some growing. Each one's put out a couple fronds. They're queen palms. There's just not a ton to say with them. Very vigorous palm trees. They've done a good job shading things over there. So I'm happy with their location. I will probably be putting those there next year. I like the way they look with the light. And it's fun looking out the windows upstairs and seeing palm fronds. And that's nice. Who doesn't love that? Okay, so that's basically everything. We can get some closer looks at some of the planters there. I didn't get super great shots of those. The Supertunia honey is still growing on this one. I planted that in these thinking, meh, they might do okay because they're not the most vigorous. Petunia, at least not when they're paired up against the Vista, but they did all right. And uh, I still, what was the other thing? Oh, what died? What didn't make it with those bad temperatures and no irrigation? The delphiniums. <laughs> I had three Shelby delphiniums planted in here. I came home and those were just done. Too hot, not enough water for them. They just shriveled up and died. But they're perennials. I'll cut them back. It is possible they'll return next year. I kind of doubt it, but we will see. I'm not heartbroken over it. It could have been a lot worse. I have some plants out here that I would have been devastated 
that's an, an extreme. I don't know if I'd be devastated with any plant that were to die. I try to not buy things that would cause that sort of emotional damage when it comes to the garden, but you know what I mean. Could have been a lot worse. The planters are looking sad, but they're still colorful, so I'm still liking them. I think in a few days they should start to perk up. If not, then well, that's okay too. And actually, you know, the strawberry vanillas, well, there's a fun shot. Let me just take a moment, take that in with the sky and the sunflower. Oh, this is another volunteer sunflower. I let it stay just because, why not? Happy cherry flower. It can hang out and I'll pull it out here in a couple weeks. The strawberry vanilla hydrangeas. When the branches wilt down and weep like this, which isn't uncommon, the flowers on these are massive. And these are going to keep getting bigger, like just holding it in my hand. These are fairly heavy. When they do that, they don't tend to stand back up. So this is probably what they're going to look like for the rest of the year. And that's why I was saying that a different variety, newer varieties that have more sturdy stems, probably a better option for something like this, but I already had these. So if you don't know, those were originally planted in two smaller blue planters on each side of the steps down there. They outgrew those planters and there wasn't enough light down there for them anymore because the trees grew. So this just made sense. Seemed like a smart place to put them. See, this one needs, I need to adjust the stake on this one. That one's fallen over. The under, the underplantings on them, kind of wild, but I'm liking it. Fun color combos and the flowers are just beautiful. Even if they're wilting down looking like wet poodles, still fun to look at. Okay, now the pots. I mentioned in lots of videos throughout this entire year that I needed some big pots. There are just a lot of things that need to be repotted into bigger containers. This Adenidia palm that's down here right there by the door and look at the size of the root ball on this thing and it's sticking out of its container this is in a 25 gallon pot the root ball i measured at 24 inches in diameter so i need to get this repotted clearly right like that's hard to keep a plant happy when there's next to no soil and it's just a bunch of roots this thing gets fertilized very often because that's what it's relying on for minerals right without soil you have to really stay on top of that so one of those pots is for this adenidia. And then once that's repotted and put back into place, I'm going to move that banana that I showed you before over here. And that can sit in front of the container. The container can't go any deeper in the ground than that because of pipes. That's as deep as it can go. So it's going to stick up some, but I'm all right with that. And that Pakistaki's Ludia will go into a different spot where I think the light will be more appropriate for it. And it should be a lot happier. So that's going to go in one of these containers. These are 30 inch containers. The inside measurement is 26 or 28, I can't remember. The one on the bottom is a 36 inch pot and the inside diameter I think is 32 or 34 because you lose some space with the edge of the rim there. They're only stacked up like this, by the way, because of the, I, I have the attention span of an eight year old. For good reason, it was raining and I thought, well, I should flip them over so I don't have holes in them yet. So that's, and that's what I did with them. The 36 inch. That's going to go to this queen palm because what, I mean, look at it. The thing's gotten absolutely huge. Needs a new container. Right now it's in a 28 inch. So this is going to get bumped up into that 36 inch container. And then I will have another free pot, a 28 inch that I can use for something else. There's no shortage of large plants that need new containers around here. So chances are the next garden tour, this won't be looking as, I guess we'll call that beautiful because I'm going to have to pull all of that up in order to repot the plant, which is fine. That's just part of it. It's what you got to do. I'll replant it and be very gentle with the roots as I do it, but they're going to have to reestablish themselves. And then I'll have to unwire it and do all that stuff. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Something I've wanted to get done pretty much all summer, but really with the temperatures we were having, I really couldn't have done this in July. At least I wouldn't have wanted to. They're better off being repotted when it's not in the triple digits, so. That's what I'm going to be working on next. Whew, I feel like this was a long one, but that's, there was a lot to talk about at the beginning of the video. Thanks for hanging out. Comment down below. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Again, thanks for the well wishes. Everything's fine here. As I mentioned, if you do know anybody who needs help or you have a GoFundMe, any flood victims out there, just comment down below. Give me the information. I'll pin it inside the comment section and put it up on Instagram and try and spread the word, see if we can help out in some way. Just comment down below and say hi. I love talking to everybody. What's going on in your gardens? The temperature is starting to subside a little bit, hopefully having some more fun outdoors. I know I'm appreciating the very mild and gentle, probably brief cool off we're having. Gonna take advantage of it and get a lot done.
a lot to get done over here. I'm really excited to get going on it. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.